In this video, we'll look at calculating confidence intervals for the proportions using Excel. Typically, we won't look at the actual sample for these situations because it's just a bunch of yeses and nos, and so it'll almost always be summarized. It's typically summarized by giving you the values for x and n. And uh, n is the sample size, and the uh, x is the number of successes. If you're asking a yes or no question, then then that's just uh, the number of yeses, typically. So for this problem, we had 500 people surveyed and 421 responded yes. All right, and then we'll calculate the uh, proportion of successes. This is a lot of times little p hat. What are these? P, p prime. Sometimes p hat. It's your sample proportion, and that's just going to be the number of successes divided by the sample size. So about 84 percent. And we'll do proportion of failures, which is Q prime. And that's going to be 1 minus P prime. All right. Um, we'll also be given the confidence level. In this case, it is 95%, so 0.95. And we need to get our critical value. And we saw how to do this last time. And we're using the normal distribution, so the critical value is norm inverse. And we will do 1 minus the confidence level that gives us the area of the two tails. And then divide by 2 to get the area of one tail, 0, 1. And let's put a negative to get the positive version of that critical value. All right. Now we can get our margin of error. The margin of error takes this critical value and multiplies it with what's equivalent to the standard deviation of the sampling distribution for proportions. And remember that the normal standard deviation is a square root of P, Q, and N, but we had to adjust the sampling distribution by dividing by n. And so we'll have square root of p times q divided by n. So that would be the formula. That'll give us our margin of error. All right, and the confidence interval can now be calculated. Right, we have a lower bound and an upper bound. And the lower bound is the sample proportion minus the margin of error. And the upper bound is the sample proportion plus the margin of error. So we are 95% confident that the true proportion who owns cell phones is between 81% and 87%. Now, the other thing we want to do is calculate sample size. And this will require us to use the same confidence level and critical value formulas from above. So let's copy that stuff down. And if you have a value for the sample proportion from a previous study, you would use that for this uh, p prime. If you don't, then you're supposed to just use 0.5. So 
50%. Uh, Q prime is going to be always 1 minus that. So you can change this. So you use the previous estimate when it's available or 0.5 when not available. All right, and then the sample size that we want. Oh, and we need margin of error. Margin of error should be set up. And the margin of error is, let's look at this example here. Um, we want to be within three percentage points. A lot of times I'll write this in words as how many percentage points. Three percentage points is 3%. Now we want to use the decimal version of that, so 0 0.03. And so the desired sample size is going to be, we're going to round up, round up, and the number is the critical value squared times P prime times Q prime. Oops, I didn't do a times there. P prime times Q prime divided by the margin of error squared. And then you want comma zero, because you want to round it with zero digits. So round it to the, up to the nearest whole number. And that would be it. 1068. Let's see if that matches their answer. Oh, well they didn't use, they want 95% confidence, or 90% confidence, so 0.9. There we go, 752. All right, and that should be all you need to do for...